Hello everybody, my name is Elliot and I'm from hahagun.com. Today we're going to talk about the coral vine. Now, the coral vine's scientific name is Antigonon uh, leptopus and it has a lot of other common names. Um, a, a, a lot of common names which include the bride's, um, the bride's tears, the chain of love and Chinese love vine and well, a lot more obviously. Now, anyways, um, the coral vine is actually one is actually a is actually a plant that is completely edible. Everything is edible, right? So yeah, everything is edible. However, this is like lost knowledge, right? Because we looked online and there's basically zero recipes. Zero recipes. I can, I I don't know how to make a zero pony. Zero recipes. <laughs> There's absolutely zero recipes on how to cook or like whatever bake the the coral vines. So does that. And nowadays people um, plant this for because it's very it's very beautiful. Or they are trying to attract bees and um, butterflies to their garden. So does that. The coral vine can tolerate most soils, and um, it doesn't need a, it doesn't need frequent fertilizer, and it also doesn't really need a a rich soil. So that's cool. Now we tried to plant our coral vines from seeds in three different um, soil: um, plant-based compost, um, cocoa peat, and peat moss. Right. So for the co for the plant-based compost, um, none of them grew. But that could be because of temperature, because we oversoak it, etc., etc. So we aren't entirely sure if it's because it, we're not saying it's because um, the coral vine cannot grow in compost. We're just saying that for us, it didn't work. Now, now the other two did. The other two um, soil did work. This is the um, cocoa peat, and these two are the peat moss. Now, from what I am seeing here, the peat moss is doing better than the cocoa peat because the cocoa peat. Most of them are smaller and two of them, like uh, this one only grew like two days ago, something like that. And this one hasn't even grown at all, right? While for the peat, uh, for the peat moss, right? Um, all of them grew, two of them are smaller and all, the rest of them are actually quite big, especially this one, this one's the biggest. So from our um, very scientific experiment, as you can see here, <laughs> from our experiment, it seems like um, me, uh, moss, uh, peat moss is better than cocoa peat. So, so we planted this on the 2nd of September and now it's already 19. So we only grew these for 17 days and it's already, and this one's already three, four inches. So we're going to transplant this, like I said earlier, and then we're going to talk, and now we're going to talk about seeds. Okay, so now that we're going to talk about seeds. So, as you can see here, now the reason, okay, the well, one, I want to say that the reason why there's a lot of flowers on the ground is because um, we left, we picked it, we um, like, we took this branch, or we took this branch and let it, be, let it. We like took this because we we're supposed to film this yesterday, but we filmed it, but we ended up filming it today, which is why all the flowers are falling out because we left it to dry, like, like overnight. So like that's why all the flowers are dropping. But anyways, now. Not all flowers will become seed pots. Only few, of, only a few of them will. Okay, so you can see here these two have seeds in them, right? And if you leave these guys on like the plant, it will dry up and turn into this, into these, into these. And then when they turn brown, that's when you harvest them. Because if you take them while they're pink, um, it, 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 they'll be too young. So you want them to be dried up completely first. So now let me show you what the seeds look like. So let me peel it. Okay, peeling it slowly because I don't want to like lose the seed. Okay. Ta-da! So wait, hold on. Let me. So that's what the seed looks like. Hmm? 
So that's what the seed looks like. So um, how you grow them is that you leave them to soak overnight, like these two. Okay, so like I said earlier, this plant is actually from the buckwheat family, which means you can take the seeds and fry them and eat them. How nice is that? Now, anyways, when you take these seeds to um, germinate, like I said earlier, you need to put them, you need to soak them. However, if you're soaking them and you see some seeds floating to the top, um, to remove those seeds because those seeds are, uh, are not, uh, those seeds are bad. So only take the seeds that are, are, that are not floating. Now, anyways, it is time to show you how to plant them. So let me take this, if I can grab it from the water. Why is the water so cold? It's fine. So, anyways, so you want to take your seed, get your starter soil. Okay. So, when you're putting it in the soil, I'm just going to show here because it's easy to see. Um, okay, over here. Okay. Um, when you're putting it in the soil, you want the like tip, like the sharp part, to go inside the soil. Yeah, if the camera could focus, that'd be great. Okay. Um, you want the sharp part to to be going inside the soil. Okay. So we're gonna take this. So, number one, you put it. You put the sharp part inside the soil. Number two, you don't drop it and lose it. Right, so I'm just gonna poke it in, and then we're gonna cover it. Good enough. Yeah. All right. So that's done. So I think this is all I need to tell you for today. I hope you have a. I hope you have fun gardening. And please subscribe and leave a like. Thank you. Goodbye.